U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo met with Indian Foreign Secretary in Washington Monday and told him that the United States stands with India in fighting terrorism. After their meeting, the State Department said the two discussed the importance of bringing to justice those responsible for a suicide attack on an Indian paramilitary convoy claimed by Pakistan-based militants. The State Department said the diplomats spoke of the urgency of Pakistan taking meaningful action against terrorist group operating on its soil. Last month, a suicide bomber killed 40 Indian paramilitary troops in a convoy in the disputed Kashmir region. A Pakistan-based militant group claimed responsibly for that violence. New Delhi has vowed to punish Islamabad for sheltering the militants saying the Indian Army chief has been given a free hand to take whatever action is required. Confirmed. We are safe on Mars. The control room at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory late in the evening of August 5th, Pacific Time, when word arrived that the Curiosity rover had landed safely on Mars. The one-ton rover, which dwarfs all Mars landers that came before it, will now spend a planned two years exploring the Martian surface. The mission is expected to cost $2.5 billion. Curiosity's task is to investigate the inside of Gale Crater, where a giant mound of sedimentary deposits may provide evidence of a wetter, possibly habitable Mars billions of years ago. But first it had to survive an elaborate landing sequence which appears to have gone smoothly. Curiosity landed on time and on target and soon beamed back grainy photos of its wheels and its shadow. Given the car-like size of the rover and the challenges of landing on Mars, Curiosity's landing goes down as one of the greatest parking jobs in history. The world Significant parts of our cultural heritage are threatened by pollution, neglect, carelessness and greed. In learning the importance of our history, we come to understand the need to protect significant remains from the past so that future generations can come to understand their heritage. You might picture Neanderthals as cavemen gnawing on bones around a campfire. Which wouldn't be inaccurate but Neanderthals may have also dined on roasted vegetables and known a bit about medicinal plants too. So says a study in the journal Naturwissenschaften, The Science of Nature. Researchers analyzed hardened dental plaque from five Neanderthals found in El Cidron Cave, in northern Spain. Yes, 50,000-year-old dental plaque. And they found a lot lurking between the teeth. Like evidence of nuts, grasses and green veggies, chemical traces of wood smoke, and tiny, intact starch granules, proof Neanderthals ate their carbs. And in one individual, they detected compounds found in the medicinal herbs chamomile and yarrow. The herbs have no nutritional value, and since Neanderthals did have the gene to detect the herbs' bitter taste, the researchers speculate that the cave dwellers were munching on them not as food, but to self-medicate. Not too far-fetched, they say, because primates like chimps also use medicinal plants. Luckily for the scientists doing this detective work, Neanderthals may have known a thing or two about medicine, but they didn't get regular checkups at the dentist. Dogs are not just man's best friend. Previous studies have shown that kids with dogs are less likely to develop asthma. Now a new study may show how, if results from my supply to us. The work was presented at a meeting of the American Society for Microbiology. The study tests what's called the hygiene hypothesis. The idea is that extreme cleanliness may actually promote disease later on. Researchers collected dust from homes that had a dog. They fed that house dust to mice. They then infected the mice with a common childhood infection called respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV. Every year, about 10 million tons of paper winds up in American landfills and incinerators, 
which is not only wasteful but adds CO2 to the atmosphere. Recycling helps, but even that material has to be repulped and paperized before you can use it to print out that recipe you'll never make. But what if you could wipe the page clean and use it again? Light amplification by simulated emission of radiation to the rescue. A new study shows that laser light can erase the toner from a piece of printed paper. The approach appears in the proceedings of the Royal Society A. Taking a page from the Art Restoration Handbook scientists sampled a variety of light sources to see if any could be used to strip the ink from laser printed documents without damaging or discoloring the paper. UV and infrared were too harsh. But a bright green laser applied in 4 nanosecond pulses vaporized the print, leaving paper that looks as good as new. Such imprinters will probably run about 30,000 bucks, so they probably will not catch on for home use. But people in the recycling world might find that the green laser fits the bill for making paper that's really green. The word hormone is derived from a Greek verb that means to excite. Hormones are found in all multicellular organisms and function to coordinate the parts of the organism. A hormone is a chemical signal. It is produced by one part of the body and is then transported to other parts of the body where it triggers responses in cells and tissues. The concept of chemical messengers and plants first emerged from a series of classic experiments on how plant stands respond to light. Think about this. A house plant on the windowsill grows toward light. If you rotate the plant, it will soon reorient its growth until its leaves again face the window. The growth of a plant toward light is called phototropism. In a forest or other natural ecosystem where plants may be crowded. Sweet potatoes contain fiber, vitamin A, and calcium. But the way that scientists think they can make them even more healthful is literally shocking. Researchers found that giving a jolt of electricity to sweet potatoes increased the level of antioxidants known as polyphenols by 60%. The investigators placed sweet potatoes in a solution of sodium chloride. They found that 0.2 amps of direct current gave the potatoes nearly one and a half times more antioxidants than potatoes that weren't shocked. The research was presented at the National Meeting of the American Chemical Society. It seems that the electric zap stressed the potatoes into producing more polyphenols as a protective mechanism, and the treatment did not sacrifice flavor. Previous research has shown that electrically supercharging white potatoes increases antioxidant levels. So perhaps it's only a matter of time before other fruits and vegetables get shock therapy too. Millions of roses get handed out on Valentine's Day. But growing roses has an environmental impact worse than many other crops. Start with climate change. Most roses in the US and Europe are imported from warmer climes. All that flying and trucking adds thousands of metric tons of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Then there's all the water needed to, well, water the flowers. And the runoff fouled by copious quantities of pesticides needed to make the roses look perfect. There are also the wildlife and workers poisoned by all that fumigation. Add to that habitat destruction where floral plantations displace native forest and wetlands. Finally, there's the refrigeration needed to keep those blooms fresh. Signs that secure borrowing remains robust and firm data on manufacturing and retail sales, released on Thursday, painted the picture of an economy that has yet to be cooled by the recent state spate of interest rate rises. Dave Hackenberg, a beekeeper since 1962, can usually tell what killed his bees just by looking at them.
If they're lying on the ground in front of a hive, it's probably pesticides, he says. If the bees are deformed and wingless, it's probably vampire mites. But last fall, Hackenberg saw something he had never seen before. Thousands of his bee colonies simply disappeared. He was in Florida at the time, pulling the lids off some of his commercial hives. To his horror, they were all empty. Obviously, this is all relevant to your final assignment. So we're going to talk about it. So until today, we've gone through face-to-face -face interviews as the main sort of part of interviewing the window. Today we're going to have a look at going to use an email and why they work, why they don't necessarily work, and what are the challenges and some of the things that we need to be understanding, you know when we are completing such interpreters. So let's start with the foreign one. Obviously, there are a few benefits to them, and they are listed there up on that slide. It's obviously less stressful for those of you who might be a little bit anxious about interviewing. It is about a hundred years since that great Canadian-born physician Sir William Osler, Regis Professor of Medicine in Oxford, complained about the increasing influence of the pharmaceutical industry on the medical profession. He would be turning in his grave at the way the industry now dominates doctors' prescribing habits. It does this not only by direct and indirect pressure on the doctors themselves, but also by encouraging the public to ask for scripts. Well, I'm absolutely delighted first of all to have been appointed to this professorship. The role is going to be about public engagement in science, it is about marketing science accessible to as wide an audience as possible, it's about making it easier for our academics here at the University of Birmingham to talk about their research to the general public and it's not just about a one-way flow of information, it very much is about dialogue. We've heard about SARS, AIDS and bird flu. Now researchers from Australia claim we're about to be hit by a new epidemic, motivational deficiency disorder. According to the British Medical Journal, one in five people are said to suffer from motivational deficiency disorder, or MOTED, and most don't even know they have it. Symptoms include being unable to get out of bed in the morning, being trapped on the couch. This year marks the 400th anniversary of the first permanent English settlement in America. A group of Englishmen, including John Smith, who later was befriended by Pocahontas, built a fort at Jamestown, Virginia in 1607, 13 years before the Pilgrims crossed the Atlantic on the Mayflower. And for the past 14 years, Bill Kelso has been working to uncover the secrets of Jamestown. Green chemistry is a concept designed to develop technologies which allow chemistry to be practiced with minimal damage to the environment, or in an environmentally compatible way, and it's meant to cover both chemical processes and chemical products. The center was set up about seven or eight years ago, and the idea was to provide a hub of activities that covered fundamental research work, international collaboration, but also educational development on public understanding of the project as well, and also networking so we network out to well over 1,000 people around the globe. The Earth is warming. Almost all the Arctic summer ice may have melted by the end of the century, claims the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC. The upside. Access to an estimated quarter of the world's oil and gas resources and the opening of the fabled Northwest Passage. The downside. The Arctic wilderness is lost as neighboring countries, Denmark and Greenland, Russia, Canada, Norway, and the United States all race to share in the bounty.
Environment problems caused by hard rock mining involve water pollution by metals themselves, chemicals used in processing, acid drainage and sediment. Metals and metal-like elements in the ore are toxic and prone to cause trouble by ending up in nearby streams and water tables as a result of mining operations. Rebuilding carbon-rich agriculture soils is the only real productive, permanent solution to taking excess carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. She's frustrated that scientists and politicians don't see the same opportunities she sees. This year Australia will emit just over 600 million tonnes of carbon. We can sequester 685 million tonnes of carbon by increasing soil carbon by half a percent on only 2% of the farms. If we increased it on all of the farms, we would sequester the whole world's emissions of carbon.